Right, so hey guys, so we're here today after we finished uh, Fighting Rifle, a tactical response. Just want to talk about the gear that we both used. So we're going to start off with what I used on day one. Uh, first off, I used the, uh, the Ares Armor Chest Rig. Uh, again, I don't think they actually sell these or make these anymore. Then uh, the company was bought out. It was it's now American Weapons Components, if I remember correctly. Uh, but I really like this chest rig. It worked great. I got just, it has four mag pouches sewn into it. Um, and you can attach more with Molly on the front if need be. I just have a small admin pouch here that I just have some batteries and some basic. If something goes down the AR, I can fix it. And then on the side, I have an attached med pouch with a tourniquet in a separate pouch. And that this chest rig, yeah, great. I really love it. It's one of the few chest rigs that can adjust to fit my size. I'm a small, short guy, and a lot of them I get, I can't adjust it down to my size. But this, you can adjust it to my size, or you can adjust it to someone who's a big guy. So I like that about the chest rig. One thing that I try to do with everything I'm wearing is I at least try to wear the belt. So this is also a belt, the Ares Armor Micro Belt. They do still make and sell these. They're about $100, but they're made of actually scuba webbing. So they're really strong, really tight, and they have these Austria Alpine buckles on them. I think the breaking strength of these is about 5,000 pounds. So you're going to break before the buckles break. You're not going to, that's not going to let you down. I just have some of the gloves that I wore the other day. Check your hand. Uh, the rifle's getting pretty hot when running those. I just have a flashlight mounted here, it's an Alzetta, and I have two uh, HSGI taco mag pouches here. Again, they work great, nothing to complain about. And uh, this was a change I actually made on the second day, because originally I was running an HSGI medical uh, insert pouch, and this was actually pushing me about four inches off the ground when I was on the ground. And so I was laying down, but my legs and my butt would be sticking way up in the air, and I didn't like it. So I was talking uh, with uh, James Jager about it. And he pointed me out to the SOE gear. Um, I think this is the LPAC, the low profile um, aid kit. And this works great. I fit everything that was in here into this pack. And this, you can kind of tell the difference even with this pack empty. This is only about one to about one and a half inches off the ground, whereas this is about four to five inches. So I can get really low to the ground with this and still have all the medical items I had in this pouch. So I like this. I really love this. It's going to work great. Then I had the uh, G-Code drop-down RTI wheel here, and, and it worked fine. A little little thing when, uh, when I'm moving side to side, sometimes it's hard to get to the holster. But that's just a training issue on my part. And then I have a, a SE little Azula knife that I mounted here. And just in the bullets where it runs out, you have another option besides going to these very ineffectual clubs on the end of your arms here. All right, let me ask you a question. So you have the med pack there, mm -hmm. and I believe on your chest rig you said you also had a med pack there. Yes. Is there any difference between those two med packs? Um, a little bit. There are no trauma shears in this pouch. Um, I don't believe there's too much of a difference other than that. Let me just pull it out here real quick so I can double check. So I have gloves in both pouches. I have compressed gauze in both pouches. I will do a close-up shot of this when I'm talking here. Um, I don't think I have any combat gauze in this. I have an uh, Israeli bandage, a hyphen, hyphen chest seals in there. Um, another thing I got here that I don't have in the pouch is an emergency blanket. If you're treating someone and they're going into shock, you want to keep them warm. So one of these would be good to wrap them up in and try to keep them warm so they're not shaking all around and going in and try to keep them out of shock. And I also have a small triangle bandage in both of these right here. So again, we'll do, we'll do a close-up shot of this um, later, and you can see that, what I was talking about. But they have the, pretty much the same thing in here. And what I like about this is it, why I wanted it back here on my back was so if I have one hand that's injured, say this hand, and I have my medical pouch over here, or let me do that again. If I have, if this hand is, goes down, my medical pouch is on this side, it's sometimes hard to reach around here or reach around the gear to get your pouch to put it on the back and you can access it with either hand. It doesn't matter which hand is injured, you can get to it. And so it just opens up here and I've got this really bandage, a chem light in here, compressed gauze, gloves, chest seal, and a uh, triangle bandage. I think that's all I got in there. Oh, nope. I do have some combat gauze in there as well. So again, we'll, we'll do another close-up of this so you guys can see it while I was talking. But that's what I have in both. And I have medical items on every piece of gear, because if I just have time to grab my belt, at least I have something to fix um, bullet holes, you know, if I get hurt or someone else gets hurt. Whereas if I just have it on a chest rig, and I, don't have, and I can't grab it or, or something goes down and I, have to and I have to drop this rig, then at least I have medical items on me. And I, and I also was running an ankle first aid kit as well, so if I had nothing, 
I still had some kind of medical items on me. And I do the same thing with all my backpacks. All my backpacks have some kind of medical um, supplies in them so I can at least help someone if I'm not wearing a tactical kit, because you're most likely not going to be in a gunfight when someone gets hurt. That's the real world for you. And I've already used, I think I've used those bags about four times already. To help. Most, it's been mostly so far minor injuries. Someone's cut themselves and no one even has a band-aid for it. But I've got a band-aid or, or a small piece of gauze I can wrap around there and apply on that. So no one carries any medical items, so you should carry a medical item. Yeah, that's definitely something learned from the course. Uh, even though this is more, you know, combat training, uh, not medical training, but some, just through uh, a few talks with uh, Jaeger and some of the other people, uh, it's important to have some sort of medical accessories with you, uh, because if you get in a firefight, there's always that possibility that you or somebody you're with could get shot, and you need to be able to know how to take care of that so that you can survive the firefight uh, to get to a hospital where the professionals then take care of you for the permanent fix. That's one thing I want to go down with uh, Timmy later and take the Median Action Medical, um, just so you have an idea. I know you had to use a tourniquet and everything else like that, but there's a lot of other things in here besides tourniquets that there's a lot of small things that you don't know yet. And so, and a lot of things I don't know yet, and I'm still learning. And so the last item I used here was my, uh, the M4 tree I built, and surprise, it really ran fine. It, it had four malfunctions while I was there, but I figured it was related to the magazines. Not, not the rifle. When I switched, when I took those magazines out of rotation, all the problems went away and it ran fine for the rest of the day. It, uh, there was no issues. Um, I did mount a nice sling here with an impact weapons mount that actually goes underneath the rail. And I'll show more of that later. But it held fine. It didn't move on me. And yeah, the rifle went great. I had, it was a little hard running at close quarters with an ACOG optic. But that's why I wanted to do this. I'd never run an ACOG that close to a target. And it was a good learning experience for me, and there was another um, shooter there who was running an ACOG, and we both struggled initially to find our all proper offset on targets that were really, really close to us. But Yeah, for the most part with the shooting, we were only about anywhere between 5 to 50 yards away for most of it. I don't think we ever went out beyond 50 yards shooting for this training. But I think we did a little bit longer range shooting than that, but we didn't, go, we didn't go past 100 yards, definitely. It was definitely inside of 100 yards. Especially the first day was really close. You were about 10 yards to within five yards of your target most of the time. It was really close and it was difficult using this, but you can do it. It's just more challenging. This is more for intermediate ranges. So like this is when they started using Afghanistan, it's when the ranges were pushing out, you need to actually see and identify your target and then be able to range it quickly. So this that's the advantage of this versus the red. The red dots great for up close and if you know what your drops are you can use it out to range too, but it's more of a challenging range, whereas this is good. But I wanted to I wanted to switch it. So I wanted to use that one the second day and this one for up close because I hadn't done that and it worked great. All right, very cool.